Hey everyone, this is Neo once again from the Overtruck magazine and today I'm here to talk to you about the Kingston Fury Renegade Pro DDR5 memory kit. So this is a pro line of memory and that means, at least I assume it means that these are all our dims. And this is my first experience not only with Kingston memory in the last 15 years, but my first experience with our dims. So nonetheless, so this memory is a bit unusual for me because most of the memory, if not all the memory I've ever used comes with a heatsink, but there's no heatsink on this one but don't let that fool you into thinking that oh this is some budget memory or anything like that no it's not it's just simply because i think kingston is aware of the fact that the clientele for this memory isn't going to be needing a heatsink and the environments that they run the memory at aren't necessarily going to benefit from a heatsink but what that will do is just increase cost for no reason with that said, I was still able to actually get a decent bit of overclocking done on this memory. So, but before we get to talking about the overclocking, let's just talk about what the memory comes to you at. So by default, this is a 6400 kit, as you can tell. It has two Expo profiles, one that's 6000 CL32 and another one that's 6400 CL32. But there's also matching XMP profiles of the same uh, configuration as well. The important thing here is that at 6400, I think it represents the sweet spot that AMD says these systems or rather Threadripper operates best at. Fortunately, I was actually able to do something even a lot more interesting, at least to me, which is run the memory at a significantly lower speed at DDR5 4800. Now you might be asking yourself, why would you do such a silly thing? Well, that's because that DDR5 4800, I can run 1.35 volts and I can run CL24. And you'll be surprised that at CL24 4800, sometimes the performance is actually better than CL32 6400. But obviously that depends on the workload that you're using because not all workloads are going to be as latency sensitive. But I found that 4800 CL24 more times than not actually beats 6400 Expo. But given what you have to go through to tighten the timing, sub timings, tertiaries and so forth, I wouldn't necessarily say that CL24 4800 is something that most people should be using. However, if you are adventurous and don't mind tinkering DDR5 7000 at the same reference 1.4 volts as possible, I was able to run that first at CL36. And then when I changed motherboards or rather the biases got better, I realized that I could actually run that at CL34, which is eventually what I settled for. And that actually gives you the best performance per none. But before we go further and I waffle on about what this memory is going to give you and so forth and whatnot, let's just get through the benchmarks and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Okay, guys. So the first benchmarks, as always, is IDA64 memory bandwidth. As you can see here, DDR5-7000 is just running away with it. Uh, second is DDR5-6400, of course. And oddly enough, DDR5-4800 CL24 doesn't show itself to be significantly better than running auto rule at 4800. Yes, in some instances, you are gaining up to 22 gigabytes a second, but it's nowhere near what you can get when running Expo. Next up, we have IDA64 memory latency. So as you can see here, this is what I was talking about. So if you run Threadripper by default and you do nothing to the memory, your latency is as high as 85 nanoseconds. But as soon as you load XMP or rather Expo, you get 71 somewhere there or 72 nanoseconds. Yes, I know the DDR5-7000 score makes it seem as if it's worse than just running Expo. It's actually not. This is within margin of error. Geekbench is another one where we see some really interesting results here. So by default, out the box, right, you will see that the Threadripper system is actually giving you 25,000 points and that's in the multi-core score. But as soon as you go Expo, you jump all the way to 27,000 points. And if you run DDR5-7000, you can increase that slightly. Cinebench is the next test. So what you will see here is that, yes, I do know that Cinebench is mostly CPU bound. And in fact, some of the score differences here actually don't make sense, but they do expose to one how much of a performance boon tuning memory can actually give to you depending on the workload that you are using. I mean, when we go from just the Expo setting of 5,900 points, which is still very, very impressive, you can jump all the way to 6,100 points, which is what, a 200 point gain? And that's running both CL24-4800 or running DDR5-7000 CL34. Corona is one test that I'm actually quite fond of. It doesn't necessarily scale 
with memory as other programs do but when you look at the performance results here you can actually see that there are some benefits to be had to tuning memory but also some peculiar results that you wouldn't expect for instance i didn't expect the expo setting to come in lower than every other setting even the auto rules at 4800 but that's exactly what happened after multiple runs Again, DDR5 4800 CL24 is running away with it, if you want to call it that, but it's actually beating DDR5 7000. But as I said to you earlier, tuning DDR5 4800 CL24 can be a bit dicey or rather it takes a long time. And I don't think the people who are buying into this platform have the time for such things. So I would still just run DDR5 7000 and be done with it because you still get some sort of benefit in the other programs, even though you don't necessarily get it here when compared to just running the auto rules. And then finally, we have 7-Zip Benchmark. So again, out the box, 430,000 MIPS, not bad. But if you look at what the DDR5 4800 CL24 can do for you, that's actually alarming. We can add over, what, 36,000 points to the total score. That is pretty huge. And again, the important thing for me here is to see DDR5 4800 CL24 outpacing DDR5 7000 CL34. That just speaks to what I was saying earlier, that some workloads actually respond better to latency. As always, you want a combination of the two if possible. Okay, so now that you've seen the benchmarks and all that good stuff, it's easy for you to tell that actually the best performance is at DDR5 7000, or if you are willing to be adventurous, as I said earlier, DDR5 4800 CL24. For me, DDR5 7000 did everything that I needed it to do. I wish I could have gotten this memory to do a little bit higher, like 7200, but I'm not sure if the CPU was going to be able to handle that running one-to-one -one and with a very low SOC voltage. So I'm pretty much happy with DDR5 7000 and that's the frequency that I'll be running and the timings that I'll be running going forward. So in that regard, the memory not only delivered at XMP, but or rather Expo, but it even went over and above that to give you even better performance at DDR5 7000. That said, I will insist that do tune some of the sub timings because there's a lot of performance to be had there. And a lot of them can get actually ridiculously low given that this is Hynix M die ICs. But as it stands, I'm super happy with this memory and I know that this performance is reliable and consistent because I've tried this on at least two motherboards, the Sage motherboard and the ASRock TRX50 workstation. And while the performance is slightly better on the Sage motherboard because of the few settings that you actually have there that don't exist on the ASRock board, you can still extract maximum performance from this motherboard as is. And in fact, all the results that you saw were actually gathered on the TRX50 workstation motherboard. So with that said, let me know what you guys think of this memory. Do you think $404 is a fair price to pay for this sort of memory? Actually, maybe that's not a valid question to be asking because of the demographic that this memory is targeted at. But do you think this is some reasonable memory? Would you be interested in seeing more Kingston reviews of DDR5 memory for more mainstream platforms? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, take care of yourselves and peace.